Hi, I'm Scott Andrews, and today we're looking at the new MAN TGX. Okay, as you can see, she's looking good here. Ready to take a load of straw down the farm. We'll be doing that later. The new MAN TGX. From a design feature, it doesn't look that different from the current generation. Main difference is the grille here. That's no longer a shiny, it's more of a matte finish. And down here on the sides, there's little air vents here by the fog lights, helping aerodynamics. The daytime running light strip has been updated. But overall, not that much different. This model here is a 510. She's got the D26 engine in her, producing 2,600 newton meters of torque. Onto the tyres, she's on Goodyear K-Max series, second generation, 31570s all round. I'm a big fan of uh, Goodyear tyres, so that's good to see. As you all know, I currently drive the previous generation MAN full time for my job. Similar cab to this, this is the GM cab, they've renamed the cab styling, so it's no longer XLX and XXL. This is the GM and the higher one will be the GX cab, if I remember that correctly. I may get it wrong, but I'll be mainly comparing this to the older one, see what improvements they've got, and is it any good? So far, looks all right. This is, I've been told, a more of a fleet spec option, but it's not completely fleet spec because it's got a fridge in it. But it's good to see a more fleet spec version because this is what most drivers will experience the fleet spec you know the the bog standard but like i said this one's got the 510 engine so it does have a little bit more kick 510 being the d26 engine 2600 newton meters of torque so comparing that to my one my one being a 580 on the d38 engine uh i am expecting a bit of a power left, power reduction but 510 is still quite a lot of power. It's more than enough. I've just noticed the radiator here is really recessed behind this front step on the bumper. Well, not, I think I would prefer some sort of cover here just to make it look a bit more pleasing. Okay, so we're getting into the cab. Redesigned door handles. Very nice. First thing, we've got switches on the door here. You can control your hazards, obviously it's come on here. There we go. I don't know if you can hear the sound, but we've got a dinging showing us the door is open. This switch will roll up your windows if you've left them open, so you don't have to climb up into the cab. And these two are also programmable. Personally, if this was mine, I would have hazards, I'll probably stick with the window, rolling up the window, and also like a door lock and unlock, and work light, so I can toggle the work light, because that's something I always forget. But yes, climbing up into the cab, you've got your standard MAN suspension controls, same as a lot of trucks. We've got three steps up into the cab. thing into the cab the dinging that shows me I've left the lights on sounds a bit like a car and again the theme continues just feels like a car so you get myself in the position I can raise the seat on full air the steering column massive change I can get it all the way out of the way happy days that's one of my biggest complaints about the my current truck the old MAN is Massive steering wheel. This one's been greatly reduced, but the old one, massive steering wheel, and you can get it away about that far. I mean, that's not good. 
I need it all the way up the way, like that one. So that's very good. MAN to me, since I've been driving them, they've always felt like they've got the biggest amount of space in the cab. I get into an MAN and I'm like, ooh, this is a big lorry. This one doesn't disappoint. Continues like those before it. So we've got nice big floor here. The dashboard is curving around now, so it's not just a straight line like the last one, so it's more ergonomic for the driver. We've got a little hand rest here for when you're controlling the infotainment system. And again, just, just feels a bit more car-like. Uh, obviously you've got your radio controls here, climate controls. I like the fact that you select the direction using these buttons now. Pull the steering wheel down, as you can see. It's a lot smaller with multifunction buttons like like a car. But yes, key in the ignition, starting her up. Lovely little animation. And the dashboard, all digital. Speedo, inf driver information, audio settings, and your rev counter, all your fuel gauges at the bottom. You will notice efficiency by there. That is the driving mode. Driving mode is selected on this stock by flicking that wheel. On this one, we've only got efficiency and manoeuvre. We don't have power. Obviously, not spec'd to have that. This unit has done 11,857 kilometres, so it's still quite brand new. So we'll have to take that into consideration when thinking of the fuel economy. Electronic handbrake, they've done away with, with the stick that was down next to you, but here. Uh, not sure how I feel about that. I do like having an actual handbrake, but I like having the actual handbrake on the dash, not necessarily electronic, so sort of give and take. Infotainment system, not touchscreen, but I say that, I think I am touching it. If I am, that's by accident. That's currently set on my phone. I can control that with this knob, well, these knobs, I should say. There's a bigger one down by there, and a larger one for finer selections. Yeah, the larger one, the bigger one underneath. Go through there. If I want to get the map, press that down, and it brings up the map. Yeah. Let's go into settings. Obviously, press up or down. We can do a lot of lovely settings, but there. But yes, like I said, climate control, so demisting, night heater, and just fan speed, fan direction, all the standard good stuff that you'll find in all modern trucks, cars, etc. Mid lift, we've got that down now because we've got the straw on. Hill hold seems to be permanently on. Not, I don't like it being permanently on. I prefer to have it off because I like to use the handbrake, but because this one's got an electronic handbrake, that might be better to have it on, actually, now that I think about it. Obviously, hazards, weight transfer of the mid-lift, traction control off. If you've got a reversing camera, that will come up there. Obviously not fitted with this one, so we just get a big, lovely blank screen. Lane departure warning, DPF, and reverse beeper shut off. This one's equipped with front and rear fog lights. Just pull it out. You'll get notifications on the dash. Up above us by here, there's your work light. I would, that's one of the things I would configure to have on the door. And then you've got all your sunroof controls, sun blind, electronic sun blind in this. And speaking of the sun blind, bit of a gap by here, which could get very annoying. Also, they've just left this as it was in the old generation, and I actually think that's a bit shorter. So that's not as effective, and what I've also found is if I leave go, it pops up anyway. Not ideal. So I really don't like the fact it does that. Could just be a problem with this one. Mr. Raymond is reversing his Scania to probably go on the wash. No, I'm actually blocking the wash bay with this. Whoops. That's the Scania R450, old generation. Ask him how many LED lights he's got on that thing. He likes to tell people. <laughs> the answer is a lot. So yes, sunroof, 
open close I like the fact that it's got a bit of a skylight in this one obviously you can shut that away if you wish and then you got background lights the red ones there you go that's the button for your interior light and as we can see we've already got a blown bulb my truck blows interior lights all the time so the fact that this has done 11,000 kilometers and it's already got a blown interior bulb doesn't board well seems like they've got the same problems but anyway looking through the dashboard controls most of the functionality is controlled here we've got voice command of which I don't really know what we do, to be fair. Oh, Apple, Car Apple CarPlay. This has got Apple CarPlay, but I don't have an Apple phone. There we are. Anyway, focusing on the dash, if I press right, we've got all the radio and navigation features. Phone. I've got the volume turned down now, so we won't hear any music. But I found to change the source, that button rather than going through five patches of fog between traffic 33 and care was there you go just press that to cancel the traffic there we go i found if pressing that button selects the source a lot easier than actually using the dial system be here if we press the left button that's where we get all our driver information so we can do light tests Information on our coolant, 24 degrees, ho, 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 ho. Battery, you know, just standard vehicle information. So this vehicle has done 195 hours so far, so not that much. All right, press right again. Driving data, so keep an eye on it, driving time, and then you go through the settings, all customizable options. Like I said, getting out of the driver's seat a lot easier with the storing away of the steering wheel. In the cab, I don't know how well you can see, I'm five foot ten. Five foot ten with a hat on. Uh, I can stand up straight, no bother. If you're any taller, I'd say you struggle. Because if I lift my head, the peak of my cap does touch the roof. In the sun, in directly under the sunroof. I'm fine, but under the actual cab, it struggles. One thing I did notice right off the bat was I've already mentioned the interior lighting. We've only got these two bulbs here. In the old one, there was a big light here and a big light here. And when you open the door, these would come on. So this one for the passenger side, this one for the driver's side. They've taken them away, so lighting it's a lot darker in here. Obviously you've got the same old reading light behind the bunk and these two up here, but they've actually taken lighting away, which make things not ideal. But I want to just point out that I've actually found two more lights right here. Very important feature of any lorry is the stereo and the sound quality. Now I'm a bit of an audiophile, so I like good sound quality which is why my lorry really annoys me because it's, oh, it's awful. Like, every MAN I've had has been very tinny, plasticky, boxy sounding terrible. Sounds like you're listening through a cable box. But going online on the forums and the Facebook groups and whatever, people are saying MANs have some of the best stereos. Uh, I don't know if I've been incredibly unlucky in my experience, because I do know a lot of them do come with subwoofers. 
I've never had one with a subwoofer. This one does not have a subwoofer. Let's see how it sounds anyway. Wait for the drop. Get that Scott Andrews intro music. I say that's a big improvement over the one I'm driving. So I know these can be specced with a sub, so with a sub as well. I mean, it's not the best system I've ever heard in a lorry, but in comparison to how bad mine is, very good. But yes, storage shelf underneath middle here, I'd say probably about the same as the standard one. Now, again, this side, I'd say that's about the same as well. Locker. You can't see anything in there. That's very dark. Even I can't see anything. It does go down a bit. So I do like that. Uh, overall, I'd say the space is about the same as the current one. Not too bad. Uh, middle one. First impressions looks smaller, but it's on a sliding door. So just lift that. A little bit tricky to lift. But anyway. Uh, shelf, I would say overall. Oh, we got a light in this one. Uh, overall, I'd say that's actually a bit smaller. I don't get the same impression that's bigger. Maybe it could just be because the opening of the door is smaller. I think that's smaller. And obviously, this one is being the same as the other side. We've still got the same cubby holes up here, no changes there whatsoever. Behind the bunk, cubby hole there, cubby hole there, and there, no changes there. Uh, we've got one here, that's that is not in mine. I do like that, although that seems a bit flimsy now that I actually touch it. But we do have one by here with a cup holder. So I do like that for when you're laying, relaxing in bed, and you have a drink. That's nice. Behind the bunk as well, while we're here, we have a remote, a new remote. This is not in my one. So a power button on the top by there. And you can control, saying the vehicle is open, so we can lock the vehicle. Can we unlock it? We can't unlock it, okay. Uh, interior lights, we can control them. Uh, okay, there we go. I think you can visually see that. If we press left, we can see vehicle information, such as the battery. I really like that for when you're in bed. See the battery if you're using a lot of electronics, like I do. I've got an inverter going. I'm always conscious of draining the battery, so I'm a bit paranoid about that. I do like that. Aircon program. There we go. Stationary aircon. Is that the night heater? That's the night heater. I can tell because the night heater signal has just come on. If we press right, get all radio and media information. Right, less of that. Again, same as the old one. 24 vo 12 volt socket, 24 volt socket with two USBs. Coming down to storage in the dashboard, sitting in the driver's seat here. Uh, this little handle for, for the infotainment selector does fold away very nicely. We've got a little cubby hole here. I would say you might be able to put a card of some kind here, but we've got two USB. So I would suggest plugging the USB and probably coiling the excess cable down by there. We've got pull-out drawer here for cup holders, and you can actually configure these. so. How big do you want the cup? So I do actually really like that. Stow it away. We've got a little shelf for here. It does not pull out. And aside from a couple of pens, I'm not really sure what you'll store in it. Or a windshield for a microphone, perhaps. And you've got two more cup holders here, or lens holders. Very good. We've got a 12 volt socket and a 24 volt here. Very good. MAN are listening to people. They're putting more 12 volt sockets and cigarette sockets in. 
we've also got USB and aux for the radio here. Uh, again, standard two drawers in all MANs, one, two, smaller one at the bottom, which is another thing I traditionally very like about the MAN, is having the drawers there, so I'm glad they've maintained that. If you should wish to lift the bunk, it took me a while to figure out how to do this, but it's actually pretty good. If I try to lift that, it's locked in there, but there's a button by here. You see a black button? Press that in, unlocks it, and it's lifted. And it's on two rams, either side. So it's a lot easier to lift. There we go. I've got pillows there, so this is more of a, it does go all the way up if I push it. But this, if you've got bedding, that's the realistic position it will sit at. So you can access the bunk drawers, you can access this area here, little shelf there on either side. These also come out, so you can see the lockers, which are also accessible from the outside. Standard. I wouldn't say they're any bigger or smaller than the ones in the previous model, about the same, nothing special, but I do like this drawer. This, uh, this actually reminds me a lot of a Mercedes. Because in my MAN, we had a fridge. So you can access the fridge there. I think this is slightly narrower than the fridge in my one, but it's also a lot taller. So I would say around about the same. But in my way, we've got a drawer here in my one, the old MAN. But it goes from about here to here. The fridge takes up most of it with about a section here for storage down the side of the fridge because be here you still have the handbrake and there's a little bin here basically i like what they did in the old one but it wasn't very well thought out this is a lot more thought out because they have the space here there's no handbrake they can put that next to the driver easily slide it out and stick this over there for easy access and little fact that this is on rams with the little lock button there i do really like that it's easy to pull it down as well. Push it down. Show you how easy it is to lift, actually. Pinky finger. Ooh. There you go. So that's a look through the basic interior of the MAN. Obviously, so far, first impressions, looks a bit better. I'm not going to say it's outstanding. I'm not going to say it's amazing because MAN, they're really playing catch up with a lot of other with a lot of other manufacturers. So all of this improvements they've done with the cup holders, the charging points, I'd say they're on par. I wouldn't say they're above anyone, but then again, I haven't, this is my first experience with the lorry, so I'm gonna be driving it this week, and I might find myself pleasantly surprised. So I can't wait for that. There's only one thing to do now, let's take it for a test drive. Let's fire her up. What does the engine sound like? Pretty standard. Yes. Also, I found a feature. Uh, if I press the cruise control resume here, automatically revs the engine for you. Like this system is in many lorries, but that's the easiest I've ever seen it. Before I go out to tip the straw, I want to highlight one thing. I've had a look at the menu here, and it says the daily driving time. And if you can see, it says 10 hour with two boxes with crosses through them, and 15 hour with one box with a cross through it out of three. That's really good, because I've used both of my 10 hours this week, but only one 15 hour shift, or reduced rest, if you will. So that tells you visually there how many you've done. I really like that. Right, let's go. How do we undo this handbrake? Do we just foot on the accelerator? Let's see, we've got the mid lift. Mid lift is down. Steering is very, very light. I do like that. I can instantly feel that as an improvement. Going nice and slow out of the yard because we're a bit crowded on Saturday. 
I'm going to transfer the weight off the mid lift by pressing the button here. The, I don't see a visual indication on the dash that I've done that, like the scan here. But the button has lit up. So now when I, I'm assuming when I go, the door's just locked itself. I'm, I've just locked myself in. Okay, that's a new feature. Assuming when I go above 20 mile an hour here, like the, Okay, it's changed up to 8th there. Which it really didn't need to because I've just slowed the hell down because of it. There we go. 20 mile an hour, mid lift has now dropped again. So no change but there. Uh, weight wise, we're carrying 39.6 ton. Well, with, uh, with my old MEN, we were carrying 39.6 ton. This could be a bit less. Carrying 30, no, we weren't carrying 36, 39.6 ton. We were grossing 39.6 ton. Ooh, I better make that, I better make that clear now. now I'm going to try out the exhaust brake. I don't think it's a full blown retarder, but I could be wrong. So, full blown on the exhaust brake. Not too bad. In stage one and two, I, I don't think, I don't think it really makes much difference. I've noticed the exhaust brake does come on when the foot brake is pressed as well. Same as the old ones. Ah, indicator has changed its sound. Not, not too bothered about that to be fair. Although I did like the how the old one was quite silent. Come along, darling. A bit slow on the uptake there. Like I said, it is less power than I'm used to. 510 horsepower with 510 horsepower with 2,600 newton meters of torque. I'm used to 580 horsepower with 2,900. So it will, it will be slower, plus it's an efficiency mode. I don't have driving modes on mine. So this is not going to give it all the beans because the software won't allow me. Right, there's a hill on the way to come out then here as we come off this roundabout. Every truck struggles up this hill with this kind of weight. Full exhaust brake, slow us down, we're going downhill here. It's slowing us down a little bit, but it's not really doing much. I've got to be quite aggressive on the foot brake here. It's definitely feels like the software is holding is holding back the amount of acceleration you put in well, I gotta say it's very smooth so far it's incredibly smooth so if you're just driving along like Miss Daisy so far this is absolutely fantastic uh, like I said we've all ever Every truck struggles up this bit of a hill because we're going from a slow speed up this hill. We need the momentum to get up. We have no momentum coming off that roundabout. Trucks is, is in a length now. Can I change it down? No, I can't. I want. I would like to be in at least. Well, it's in tenth now, but we've slowed down again now. I would like to be in ninth, but I can't slow it down or drop it down a gear. Because we we are losing speed. Actually, no, we no, we are losing speed, but not very much. Sticking at about 36 mile an hour. And uh, front and centre of the dash is the adaptive cruise control. Yeah, let's get it into cruise control. Apparently, I can only set it at 53. And it will overspeed that to 58. And it will go into eco mode and drop down to 48 when we're on the hills. That's the indication it's giving me for that. So yeah, it's coming up eco on the 
dash now, so like I said, a bit of a fleet spec model this one. But then again, those of you who watched my previous videos, recently I was in the R450 Scania, 16 plate, so it was the older gen. Uh, that was a fleet spec motor, to be fair. Put it through his paces and it wasn't too bad, it wasn't too bad. Are you going to pull out at me? No, I'm staying there. Okay, even though cruise is set to 53, uh, 53 mile an hour, she's let herself drop down to 50 now. Understandable because we've got a bit of a downhill here. She's dropped herself into 10th gear. I put the exhaust brake on to keep us from rolling too fast down the hill. So she's got a lot more brains than the last one, than my one. With my MAN, even though it doesn't have eco mode, uh, it will knock itself into neutral when going downhill. But if it's too too much of a downhill like this, I, I would consider this a bit steep, too steep of a gradient. It'll keep in gear and try and hold itself back. So this is doing the same, but it's doing it preemptively. It's, it's thinking ahead quicker, if that makes sense. I'm really not looking forward to dropping this load in a farm with all this rain. Because rain and cow business doesn't really board well. But that's not what this is about. This is about the truck. I'm going to see if I can fiddle with the, the speed. Ah yes, right. Pressing left and right we here. This will increase and decrease the amount of what I'm assuming is uh, the range of the speed. So I press it all the way down. The slowest it'll allow itself to go is 51. And the fastest is 56. But if I increase that to max, the slowest it'll go is 47. And the fastest is 59. That being, of course, having the cruise set at 53 mile an hour. Lane return. Okay, I'm going to assume what that is. It's going to steer for me. Let's see if I can test that. Swerve a little bit to the left. Will it take control of the steering for me? It will! That's a very weird feeling. I thought it would give me uh, an audible warning from the lane departure system before it would actually do that. That's quite a surprise. Oh, it's doing it for you on this lane as well. And I've got a visual warning on the dash as well. That genuinely feels like I've hit the curb. So there's a car coming now, I'm not going to do it again. How are they taking me? That's not an excuse to be distracted and play on your phones. Always pay attention, kids. Playing with the infotainment system. Screen with this wheel while driving along. First impressions while driving. Don't even bother. I've had difficulty just doing one simple thing on that thing. I was just trying to bring the map up and it kept over going to the next option on the menu when it shouldn't have. So I know it's done it by itself for some reason. <laughs> okay, uh, first impressions, I don't like that. The efficiency mode, while it is giving us an incredibly smooth ride, that's what it is, it's the efficiency mode. It's trying to squeeze every drop of fuel it can out of the engine and keep you going for as long as possible. So, I mean, every truck's got that these days. Not ideal for every fleet, but it's exactly what most fleets want, the big fleets, the supermarkets, the trunkers, a lot of general hauliers do our RDC work. Uh, I'm not looking forward to going up the hill by the farm because I know this is going to struggle. So, I'll see you when we're at that point. Right, we're off the main road here and we're already meeting cars. 
Not slowing down for me, thank you kindly. The mirrors in this, uh, they're definitely, definitely a lot smaller in terms of blind spot. But, of course I'm not used to it, so it's taken a bit of getting used to for me. Because it's wet, I'm going to transfer the weight to this corner. The, uh, the rain is really coming out, I know. This is the main test, of course. Gotta get it a bit slower. Get the weights transfer on the mid lift, because this corner is where it all could go wrong. We're slipping, we're slipping, we're sliding. No, we've got it, we've got it. Oh, very good. Oh, no. She held her own, she held her own in that dodgy corner. Right, thank you for watching this. My first impressions of the new MEN TGX. I'll be taking this on a trip this week, so I'll be learning a little bit more about the lorry, see what I like, what I don't like, so be sure to stay tuned for them video. So in the meantime, thank you for watching, like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. And just a reminder, if you are looking to pass your test soon, I just want to refine your HTV driving skills, check out the new Truckers Handbook by Malcolm Green. It says new truckers, not just for new truckers, veterans can learn a lot. But if you are primarily using it to pass your test, there is a chapter dedicated to all about choosing driving schools, what to prepare for, etc, etc, all when passing a test. So, good book, like I said, even veterans can learn a lot from it.